Hello everyone, welcome to this tutorial on heat pump dryers. I'm going to pull apart this here LG dryer and uh, see how it works inside, see what the common failures are. Got your pump there and you've got loads of other stuff in there. You've got a diverter valve and a self cleaning system there. That's fun, that likes to break. Right, air comes in through the filter, through the fan, blows into the evaporator through the condenser, out the back, up the back, into the back of the drum, and through the clothes, and cycle repeats. Now, these are really bendy, these coils, so don't be bending those flat, because if you bend them flat, the whole thing is uh, useless, so don't do that. Now, on this one, I'm going to bypass these two relays, just by doing this. Unplug it, plug it in, and you'll just force live and neutral down through. One relay does live, one does neutral to the compressor. So, power it on. And what we'll do, so I've just switched the power on, it's just started pumping, and you can see the condenser temperature going up. Now, that condenser temperature ain't going to go much above about 45, 50 degrees C. So, Basically what will happen is that's about as hot as you're ever going to get a, a heat pump dryer, you know? It's not going to get hotter than that. So I've just fast forwarded it a bit here. And now I'm just checking to see if I've got gas in this one. Because when I was doing these tests I didn't know if this thing worked at all. So I'm just checking if it's fully gassed by checking the superheat temperature of the return line. But don't worry, you don't have to do that. But yeah, these LGs have like um, three major failures. It would be one, the diverter valve got fluff in it. Two, the drain pump's got fluff in it. <laughs> or three, the evaporator's got fluff in it. So pretty much, fluff is the killer of these tumble dryers. The, the actual heat pump system in it, the scroll compressor and the, the gassing system is very robust. And you'll very rarely see like you know the heat pump actually failed for most of the call outs I get is that the customer doesn't like it it's coming up to the end of its five year warranty or whatever they've got and they're just trying it on or they haven't cleaned their filters but I'll show you all that in a minute oh stick around to the end because I've got a real easy proper easy test to do so you just walk into the customer no tools do this one test and it'll tell you if the heat pump's working or not and that goes with all heat pump dryers, so that's really cool. So you can see there, look, the evaporator is proper nice and cold. It's like minus 15. So that's perfect. And I've got superheated vapour all the way through my return line, so I know I'm full of gas there. That is fine. Yeah, so there's no heater at all in these dryers, just a dehumidifier. The heat, you do get some heat in it, but it's a byproduct. So it, what it does, it sucks any heat out of the air coming through. As you can see there, like that gets really cold. And when it's running, it won't ice up like that. The airflow will keep it from icing up, but it will act like a cold can of Coke on a warm summer's day. We get the water beading down the Coke bottle. That's exactly what that does. It takes the moisture in the air and dries it and then when you come through the condenser the air heats up again and now what you've got there is the air is the heat expelled from the gas that's taken from the drum plus any waste heat from the compressor so that's how that's how the whole system heats up it's because the heat from the compressor now this is key heats up the drum so that extra heat that's generated in the, in the refrigerant system that will end up building up inside the system and that makes the drum slowly get warmer. But we'll look into that with our final test, with our really easy test at the end to see if it's working. So you can see there, that, that condenser does not really want to go, let's fast forward this for a while. See, it didn't really want to get faster than 45, uh, sorry, hotter than 45, did it? And that's in a 20 degree room. So I suppose if the room was 25, 26 degrees, a hot summer's day, you might reach 50. But that, that's pretty much your lot. 
So I've unplugged it now and it's cooling down. So yeah, this one by the by was just a customer saying it's not drying and she was right, it wasn't drying. It must have been taking forever. We'll take a look at what this, what's wrong with this one in a sec. So yeah, basically that's it. You've got a dehumidifier instead of a heater. So I had a customer once tell me it used to burn his hands and it doesn't anymore. Rubbish. <laughs> I said to him, mate, rubbish. It never burnt your hand. You're lying. You can't get that hot. Just cannot. So that's that's the sort of temperature it'll get to when it's running, about 5 degrees. But it'll have nice warm air coming onto it. So it'll it'll catch lots of moisture. And what happens is the water drips off of that evaporator and underneath that there's a tank and there's some little spikes that hold hair so we'll have a look at the have a look under there now be really careful when you're pulling this up because you can bend the pipes yeah look at that fluff <laughs> so the, the the problem with this one was fluff was in the evaporator so all you got to do is pull all that fluffy stuff off and clean it boom there you go nice and clean and now what you want to do to give it a full service you'd want to take both the coils up like that really carefully pull that cover off and then it's just a case of what goes wrong with them <clears throat> is fluff underneath here as you can see all that all that fluffy water <laughs> nice that tank goes through to the drain tank. You see that hole on the bottom left? That'll, um, that pump there, it's a three phase BLDC pump, and it'll pump water up through that pipe. It goes to the diverter valve, and that'll tell it to either pump water back through the evaporator coil to clean it, which obviously works a treat, doesn't it? Otherwise, it'll <laughs> I'm being sarcastic there. But yeah. That pumps either water to the evaporator assembly, or when the diverter valve tells it to go the other way, it pumps water to the tank at the top. See there, you've got two metal pins. That'll tell the board when the tank's full. If you've got a load of crap around that piece of plastic in the middle, enough so that electricity can pass along it to the other pin, that will make it believe that the tank's full when in fact the tank's empty. So that's enough. So just give it a little wipe off. You're not cleaning the metal pins, you're cleaning the actual plastic between them. So you've got to clean all that out, so it's nice and clean. And here's your diverter valve, which sits there. Now, this thing, you can fully test it with no tools. Pull the four screws out, pull it apart. Now, just check there's no blockages in there, which is there's not on this one. And you've got this grey thing. So you can pull that off. You'd be right if you thought you could put that in the wrong way round. But don't worry, it'll fix itself, believe it or not. Doesn't matter which way you put that back on. So, all you've got to do is turn that motor by hand. See, it, it does turn, it's really stiff. But if you if you can hear the actual stepper motor going... If you can actually hear it moving and all the gears are okay, there is nothing wrong with that valve. Absolutely, 100% nothing wrong with it. If you look here as well, you can see that white gear moving. I've put a little black dot on it. You can see it going round, can't you? As long as it's moving and you can hear the motor moving, that is absolutely fine. No problems there. And you can't even put this thing back together wrong, you know? It's got two little clips on it. See there? You can't go back on the wrong way. You can't go wrong with that. Don't be afraid to pull that thing apart. There's nothing in there you can break. Pop your screws back on, and she's good, mate. Beautiful. Right, as I promised you. So that's all your problems you get, so. Right. This is a really easy test you can do with any heat pump dryer. The picture in the middle is a Bico. Now the ambient temperature is 18 and a half degrees. And the one on the, f the big one, the big picture, don't worry, I'll sort these pictures out in a second. Let's put that out of the way up there so we can watch them both. The big picture is starting off at 21 degrees. So there's a difference in room temperature. This is what I want to show you. 
that's a black LG one in the big picture with the timer on it. And the little picture up the left there is a BK. Now, I've put them on. This is what you're going to do when you go into the customer's house. You put your probe just inside the fluff filter. And you'll love me for this. It's great. It gets it every time. Put the probe just inside the fluff filter. Observe the temperature. Say it's like 20 degrees or whatever. Pop it on like a 40 minute warm cycle. And then wait 11 minutes from when you turn it on. And in that 11 minutes, we'll have a look. You see it takes a while. You probably want a cup of tea. So customer's going to have to make you a cup of tea. <laughs> Thank you, customer. Better be a good cup of tea. Right. So as we get up to 11 minutes, you're going to notice you're going to gain about 10 degrees C in the drum. Now, just about now, I'm going to add in one more video, and that is the same LG dryer, but it's now in... It's, this is a hybrid dryer, so this is a heat pump only on the bottom screen now. And the top one is an electric heating element in the hybrid mode. Just to show you, and you'll notice it's at 30 degrees right now. Same as the other one, but it's going to rapidly heat up because it's not a heat pump dryer. So you can see the difference between the two. So the bottom one and the top left one, they're both the heat pumps. So yeah, going to run this until 11 minutes and you want to see 10 degrees increase from whatever temperature it was when you first put it in. And it, I don't think a heat pump dryer should be used in a room below 15. It just wouldn't work. Now, if the compressor still works, but there's no gas in the system, you'll still see an increase in temperature, believe it or not, because the heat from the compressor will still get pumped around that system and get blown into the drum. But you'll probably only see a 4 or 5 or 6 degree increase, if that's the case. So if you only see that, now notice, here we go, look, let's fast forward to 11 minutes. As you can see, uh, 18 to 29, we've got a 11 degree increase on the Bico. And 31, we've got a 10.5 degree increase, something like that, on the LG after 11 minutes. We'll fast forward again to 15 minutes, and this is your 15 minute test. So what I was saying was, if you still get an increase, but it's not as high... It's just the heat from the compressor. And now, I did say that this is the heat from the compressor as well, but I'll explain that. And there you go, it's passed its test. After 15 minutes, you've got a 13 degree increase on both of them. So that's fine. And that the reason you get a higher increase is because when you've got gas in the system, the compressor has to pump more than twice as hard to get that gas around the system. So what you're doing is you're drawing more current through the motor coils. Therefore, the motor coils get hot. And then, draws more current and there's more waste heat out of the compressor. So that's how you can tell if it's working or not. If it doesn't reach those minimum figures, it's lost some gas. Or there's something wrong with it. Poor pumping compressor. And now this is just, um, just showing you that, I think I'm going to go for half an hour on the fast forward, just to show you that they do not, really get hotter than 45 that is your lot they don't they don't need heat to dry they they um they use a dehumidifier so yeah if you found this video useful hopefully now you can just go into a heat pump dryer armed with your temperature probe and say mate it does work what are you talking about after 15 minutes 15 minutes is all right you spend longer than that on an integrated dishwasher don't you so it's all good it's all good if you found this video useful Please subscribe to the channel. I'll put more up there. I really that would really mean a lot to me. So cheers, guys, and um, I'll see you soon. Take it easy. Oh, by the way, what was I was going to say I'll have another video about stripping one of them down as well. Right. Have a good weekend, lads. Bye.